So I'm just going to pick up here because this is supposed to be like a diary anyway. I can't keep doing this. But um, her name was Scott. They've used the Scott in the murders and Mark's name, and uh, you get into the patterns. But she rejected me and said that suddenly they had to do background checks on me. I haven't committed a crime. I've only told the truth about it. It is so appalling. It's been like if you could take a person down a journey and um, commit every vile act in the book and praise God and praise America while you're doing it, if you ever see it, the world sees it. I can't believe that they would approve of it. It's sick. Uh, but anyway, here's where this is on um, by Joseph's Dream, the ministry out of uh, Washington, North Carolina, their HUD. She's rejected me. Your record of previous tenancy did not meet our screening. And then she, um, it, <laughs> I, I, I hope one day I get to tell it before the world, except what do you do with it? Um they're doing things that the FBI tell them to do in law enforcement, and she did it. She mailed me some letters uh, later on that was, uh, well, I think this might be one of them <laughs> that I've got here. Anyway, she, her last name's Scott, but you get into patterns, and uh, she mails it on my son Scott's birthday. It was postmarked. It was a rejection, by the way, and this was deliberate. This wasn't just an accident. So, anyway, I finally gave up on that, like I'm this uh, criminal. They're treating me like I'm the criminal. So I had to go back to have a place, or I did, to Edinburgh in Richfield. Richfield did the same thing to me. Uh, they've lied. Nothing, you can't, if you someone did get these people up before a court of law, you can't get that many people to lie, and the fact that, the things happen would end up uh, proving itself. It's a matter of the law working and it getting before a court because this didn't, it affected me. It's horrible. And it's like the FBI said to me years ago in 82, and he uh, pretended to be yawning like he was bored. He said to me, he says, you know what people do with this? And this is way back then. He says, you bore them. They won't care until they find out how it affects them. And by that he meant a lot of, in different ways, but the fact that a lot of Americans have been programmed uh, mind control. They're um, like, uh, well, the Fort Hood shooter that I showed you who went to school at Blacksburg and was born here in Roanoke. Um, a psychiatrist, he was programmed. You've got Timothy McVeigh was programmed. You've got, I mean, they go back. I was thinking one of the first that I knew that Marion Control was used on, or not one of the first, but back in that era, I didn't exactly know what was used on them. I knew they were done in patterns, but it was Sonny Von Bulow. And that's all I'll say about that. There's a whole list of them. But they were deliberately done in patterns throughout the years, and I go down like this journey through hell, telling it and trying to tell what was done to me and trying to live and getting things that are so sick done to me. You get a whole different opinion about people. The people that helped me were, by the way, I don't know if you can see it, but were the British and Germans. And I'm not talking about the Windsors. I'm talking about my German family, the British citizens who've hung in there. And by the way, there's not much left of Britain after the United States took everything over and put their bases on it. But uh, where I'm at, you can't see it, but that's British. And uh, you don't know how. Anyway, they were the ones on the trail. And they're the ones that were there for me. And uh, I wanted to say before this tape goes out, I called, this is bad enough, If it's like a rapist. you having to go back and beg your rapist. Um, to go back to Edinburgh, to Jennifer, 
who's still been living a good life all these years. And by the way, the woman that got my apartment was still there. I went back the other day. I You hesitate to go back because they've done it, and I know what's happening. I can't stop it. Wherever I go, um, it's planned uh, if I get something, and it's already uh, – or they would move in anyway. It's that easy. Uh, and start with the air conditioning or the spraying of the beds or you name it, using the chemicals on me deliberately. Um, so I hesitated to go back to Edinburgh, but I did. And um, she told me, it was like a joke. Um, you wouldn't get any of the truth <laughs> unless you start putting them up in a court of law and then you start seeing the mess and the lies you can't believe. Um, but anyway, the Donna that was nice to me, at least halfway nice, uh, she said something about don't kill the messenger, meaning me back then. So they all knew all of this, what was going on. But I have to go back here and apply again, which is bad. They should be locked up in jail for conspiracy and assault with, uh, what do you think uh, they're going after Assad for? So I'm one person. I just happen to be the Queen of England. You kidnap? So hell, just use chemicals all over me. It's only a joke, you know, right? It's killing me over and over, and my kids, wherever they are, Mark and Scott, they've already done a job on them. But uh, this is America. Hey, <laughs> what they say? You can tell the truth. Well, I got news for you. You follow me, and you see how much, what hell you go through. Whether you, <laughs> anyway. I'm back at Edinburgh there in an interview, and uh, they tell me that the woman that got my apartment, uh, Carol Rogers, uh, Simon, that made the statement to me that she's been there living pretty good all these years since 06 when she got my apartment, and they were soaking me with chemicals, but uh, she's one told me that I was paying for what my uh, family had done. She was referring to my German family and, uh, I mean, I'm Windsor, my, Victoria the Second. I was named after Victoria the I uh, and Albert. And, yes, I'm very proud of my German ancestry. They hung in there and helped me, as did the Brits. I'm talking about the British citizens and some Americans. But as a whole, it's been a joke uh, the Americans have done. I mean, they hate my guts because they committed the crimes against me. But anyway, I'm back at Jennifer's, and I'm sitting there and having to, it's like looking at your rapist who's defiled you and everything and begging just to be left alone, just let me have a place to live, you know. And um, I've gone to Melinda's way and gotten turned down like something's wrong with me where they gassed me over at uh, Reverend Black Reverend Moore's place in Bedford, and his corporate office is, is out of Washington, North Carolina. Richfield did the same thing. I mean, you wouldn't believe the lies. So now then, um, I'm going to go back and focus on Edinburgh because it goes back in time, uh, a date uh, in time. When I first went there back in '06, and now I'm going back uh, and trying to reapply to get in where they, in essence, tried to kill me certainly damaged me, but it went back October the 10th, and Jennifer takes me in, and she says, well, uh, I can tell you now, I filled out all the applications and all that, she says, uh, we won't have anything for within the next five years. Well, I'm going to mention, like, this is elderly. They're all my age, 75 or older. There's a few uh, a little bit younger, but they're going to die in the next few years, you know? Um, and she tells me that, uh, well, we won't have anything available for at least the next five years. So this is all a joke. They did all this to me in 06, and they got me crawling back to them. This is a, a side of people you should all see. When they can get away with murder, and they enjoy it. When they think they're free and clear. So um, I left. And I'm going to say, I'm not going to name this person, but he's a part of this whole thing. 
So you wonder who he really is and what he really knows. But he said to me, and by the way, he's doing a job. He's not on my side either. But he said, well, you never know. Um, 